my one question. I'm wondering if we could eat some dirt. Eat some dirt. <laughs> yeah, well, you can try our luck. Uh, I don't know if he's fish fertilized it out there right now. But we can go. I'll take you out in the garden in a bit. Okay. Sure, you can try you, it. You talk in your book about you. I've dreaming. tasted dirt. I'm not a good enough. I know the, I know farmers that do eat it, the real prairie aficionados and so on, that are really good at uh, telling. And they can, you know, they can, you got to be practiced. You take a walk around your farm for the span of one full day and evening. That's a very ambitious undertaking for what you include in this one day walk. Was it a difficult decision to go one day? It could have been, I could have seen it 18 years, a year for a chapter for each year. I could have seen it much larger. You distilled it down to this one day. Can you tell me something about that? Person? Well, it, it was uh, the, I, one of the big things that had trouble with the book, I guess, was trying to figure out that structure to, to do it. And there was all kinds of ways I could have done it really linear and historical, but the book is actually against linearity. And so what I decided to do was to use that day and just in what happens when you wander through a day at a farm, and that would allow me to evoke not only the 18 years um, that we've been on the farm, but even going back further to... It goes right back to Babylon and sort of forward to globalization. But that was sort of the, the way that I could do it in a non-linear storytelling format because I didn't, the, the, uh, like I say, the argument in the book is against linearity. It's, it's against putting all your carrots on a roll, uh, even though we do do that sometimes. <laughs> right? um, we actually do wide bed gardens and so on. But uh, what I'm talking about is the fact that we, we tw tend to try to put a logic on on everything and the logic ends up not in, being super inclusive and so by using this one day i can use all of the history at the same time and so that the, that way the logic to my mind was a little bit more ecologically um attuned um to the nature of being on a farm and in the community because it's not just being on the farm it's also the, the community and the things that happen around farms and so on right there's a well, section in the fall fair and neighbors and various things like that and the things that when tight little rural communities would get into. So it's not just the farm, but it's a farm is part of an entire community and I wanted to sort of capture all of that. Well, I think you captured it beautifully. Is there anything you had to leave out? Yeah, there's about 130,000 <laughs> words. <laughs> it was originally, um, the first draft was about 235,000 words. It was only supposed to be a 60,000 word book. But um, I, I had to write it all at first and sort of figure it out. And then I had to decide which I had to take out. And I had to take out a, quite a lot of good stuff. Right, but it just didn't fit in. I mean, you know, it's like writing a novel, and then in many ways, this is kind of like a novel, right? This is why this. It's actually what it, the model I used in there is the native teaching tale, which is you know when you've got a culture without a written language and so on, you have your teaching tales are compass everything, right? Then they not only um, they tell you a sort of good cracked on story or whatever but they've got lots of humor and sorrow and um, how to tips and lessons and good manners and uh, you know what to do in certain situations and stuff like that so I wanted that kind of inclusivity uh, of it and, and the, the model of the, the, of the native tale um, struck me as just a, a perfect one for this kind of story so I could basically give gardening tips at the same time as I'm talking about the sort of meaning of of living within an environment and entropy and some of the other wild things that I I drift by and so on in the in the course of the book. Well you also say at the beginning that this you don't want to portray a romantic view, yet I would argue with you that there is romance in every page of this book. And who do you think Brian loves more? <laughs> Farming or you? <laughs> well, that's dangerous. What would you say? Because I thought it was pretty darn equal in, in intensity. Well, I would think writing would be above farming and meat, personally. <laughs> well, it's the love of the planet. Um, it's actually that, it's, if, if you take romance in that kind of a sense of, of just um, respecting and, and being... And, I love your tea. Isn't it a nice tea? It's really if we'd nice really tea. had our wits about us, we'd now have a, made a fortune in farming by growing tea.
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it, it takes a long time for the plants mm -hmm. to get established, right? To, to right. Get it. It's so mild. This is like a white tea. Yeah. Right. And I am basically what I do is I got a samovar upstairs in my office, and I just put the tea leaves in it and just keep pouring hot water in all day, and it sort of oh. keeps it because uh, it's not treated, right? So it sort of breaks down. As it takes about a day for it to start getting tannic and. And so on, right? I like being locked in my room with a parent. <laughs> <laughs> That's me and Tuco's den up there. It's an oven up there in the afternoon, though. So, see, he's got the bird's eye view of the farm, and he can see everything that's going on, and it sort of amuses him and it oh, yeah. provides interest for him. Tuco is the next book. Oh. Tuco's in this book, but mm -hmm. Tuco is the next book. Yeah, I'm doing his biography. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, Mr. Brett, we will thank you very much for your time. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, book club buddy. The, the black-shouldered no. pea uh, cock, um, That's uh, right, they're peacocks. Are, they, are peacocks the part of the peahen family or the other way around? No, they're all pea fowl. Sure. Yeah, a little gritty. <laughs> gritty. It's definitely still got a lot of sand in this. With soil. a tinge of sand. Yep. Yeah, you dream about of... that? Does it taste like that in your dreams? It tastes differently in every dream. It tastes differently in every place. You do all, I mean, like I say, but it this it actually doesn't. It actually tastes like dirt. Yeah, and it also tastes fairly even. It does. It's not really um, acidic or alkaline tasting. So I, I would imagine this is. As you know, we, we certainly balance it up. I haven't tested the pH for a while, but I, I think this is pretty balanced, I think, because you can tell by what we can get away with growing in it, right? It, it's taking a fall. Um, I, I just love these oh, chickens. Love they them. are so dumb. <laughs> they're beautiful. They're very beautiful, but they're really, um, Lucy is, is just like a beautiful one over there, and there's a beautiful speckled one around here somewhere.